Screen Cam Demo for Laboratory 4. The aim of this laboratory is to design a couple of current sources. The first design you can see in figure 1 is a beta helper current reference cell. Parameters can be picked up inside the ORCID references as noted here. The file for this is in Mirror 2 on Blackboard. The second design you're going to perform is a Weedler, band gap, uh, a Weedler current source. You're going to look at that in a later lecture, but I want you to go through the maths today. Design 1, you're going to design for a supply voltage of 7 volts, output current and reference current of 0.8 milliamps. Further, I'd then like you to plot a graph showing me the variation of the output resistor, called R15 in this case, as a function of I out over I ref. So again, you're doing the same thing to look at any kind of effect that the early voltage may have. The open-ended question for you is, will the beta helper actually improve early voltage? Second design is a Weedler, um, sorry, not a Weedler, a Wilson current mirror. The Wilson current mirror basically cancels um, currents from the output to the reference, so they're always going to be very, very perfectly balanced. Um, your design task is VCC 7 volts, output current and reference current 700 micro. I also want you to calculate the load value so that you get 3 volts DC at the output node. OK, let's move on to our uh, PowerPoint. Let's have a look at what we can do. Your tasks are now to design this circuit. Ooh, let me just pop up my, um, my uh, digital ink. OK, here we go. Let's go through the mathematics. You need to look at the Kirchhoff's voltage loop, which comes through there. OK, let's take it apart, shall we? I'm just going to write it at the side here. I reference is a design parameter multiplied by R5 is the first volt drop that we see according to that component. We now have Q7. I'm going to ignore that one for the moment and then go down, go, go down to the bottom. We now have VBE Q6. Okay, that's here. So we would calculate that from natural log V, um, sorry, VT natural log uh, IC Q6 over IS. Okay, now we need to calculate the base current. We've got one base current here and one base current here for our designated collector currents. Okay, both of our collector currents are going to be approximately 700 micro because that's the design spec. 800 micro, sorry. This circuit, the, the first circuit is 800 micro. So we can calculate our base currents. We're going to have two base currents at the emitter of Q7. A little bit of maths, we realize that we're effectively going to have the same collector current on Q7 as we have in the emitter. Ergo, we can calculate the VBE volt drop across Q7. Let's write that down the bottom here. So VBE Q7 is equal to VT natural log. In this case, we want I reference, okay, divided by beta, plus I out divided by beta, and then we want to divide the whole thing by IS. Okay, so this VBE will be substantially smaller than this VBE. And those are our three equations. Put them together and you'll then be able to solve to find the value of R5. Okay, your second part of the design task then of course is to sweep the R15 component. So let's move on. Um, in sweeping the R component, you're going to get something like you've seen previously. You're going to get a shallowish gradient on the current source with some key design parameter at some value of RL and some default value of I reference and I out. And then at some critical value, the gradient will change. 
This effectively is a compliance limit. Okay. That's where the circuit stops working at some particular voltage because it can no longer drive that current into that load. So I'm going to leave the rest of the equations for you. Let's move on again. Okay, you haven't seen the Weedler band gap, oh, sorry, the Wilson design before. Let's do a little bit of maths. One base current, one base current. Two base currents on that wire. Therefore, at the emitter, we have two base currents. Plus beta base currents, because beta base currents is at the collector. On this side, we have beta base currents. If we divide the emitter current by 1 plus beta, we'll get the base current into this design. So the amount of current here is 2 plus beta divided by 1 plus beta. Okay, so at this node on the resistor, we have on this side, we have beta plus beta plus 2, all divided by beta plus 1. And on this side here, we take this term and multiply by beta. So we now have beta into beta plus 2 over beta plus 1. If you solve that by dividing the output by the, the reference, you find out that we end up with beta squared terms and we end up with a very, very close match to our output current, to our reference current. Please ignore this value here. That was a value that I forgot to take off the schematic and it was for a different supply voltage. So your circuit will be different. So let's change digital ink color and I'll show you what your design parameters should be. Okay. Screen pointer, digital ink. Let's go for green. Okay, let's start off with the basics, shall we? We have VBE here. VBE Q2. We know what the collector current should be. Now we move to the collector, because the base and the collector are shorted. Now we move across to this side with, again, VBE this time. Q3. So we've now moved up to this node. So now you already know the supply, you know this DC voltage, and you know this current flowing through it. You can calculate RF. Okay? I'll just write out the quick equation. RF is equal to VCC minus, let's just put two VBEs, VBE Q3 plus VBE Q2, okay? I put them both in one term, so those are two are subtracted from that one. That's our voltage, and then we divide by, in this case, I reference, which is given, okay? And that's this part designed. Over on this side here, you're going to set our load to provide a specific DC output, okay? So that's quite simple. Now, you haven't seen the Wilson before. Ooh, let's just write it here. This is the Wilson mirror. It's very famous, very